my name is Jennifer. Um, if you're still taking your break, that's fine. You can come back to us whenever. I'm gonna go ahead and start so we can keep everything going. I'm gonna go through some of your tubs. Here's my tub that I have in my classroom. I teach first grade in Sumner County and I've been teaching um, first grade for 19 years and I use Ag in the Classroom on um, practically every single day in my classroom. I've been evaluated using the team model with Ag in the Classroom. And we have all kinds of different assessments that you can use that I have implemented in my classroom. So today I'm going to show you how to incorporate science, STEM, math, literacy, um, and also to how you can use these activities in your classroom to be evaluated on. This is the first book that we're going to use. The Bee Man. It also has an educator guide with this. You can order most of these books that I'm going to um, show you. You can order them on Amazon. You can also ask your local Farm Bureau if they have it in the lending library or see if your local Farm Bureau would um, provide funding to get both of these. So here's the Bee Man. Here's the educator guide that has different activities in it. It's connected to Common Core, even though Tennessee's not a Common Core state anymore there's still the um, new science standards there's literacy standards in here here is another book that i asked my local farm bureau for nat geo national geographic kids bees the nonfiction text my local farm bureau gave me enough funding to purchase 25 of these a class set you do have this in your tub the honey bee flies a bee's life so this is in your tub these literacy pieces are not in your tub, but I've just given you, you can go to Amazon. You can ask your local Farm Bureau in the Lending Library, or you can ask your local Farm Bureau for funding to purchase some of these books. Okay. In first grade, I teach them how to read. So I can use these books to hit literacy, math, science, STEM in my classroom. I was evaluated by the T model of this a couple years ago. Here is, um, since they're both nonfiction text feet, nonfiction, you can use a graphic organizer that's nonfiction text features to hit your literacy standards. Because if you're evaluated on the team model, you have your literacy standards and then you have your nonfiction standards for the state of Tennessee. Okay. To hit those literacy standards, you could do the B man, you could talk about characters, setting, since it's comprehension. They can label it, they could write a sentence down here, they could do a quick pick. Okay. You could do this as a read aloud, you could do this in a small group. Here is an anchor chart that I would do either before, during, or after. Schema is what you know. Schema is what's in your brain. So um, this is the vocabulary words. This is also the questioning part on your team model when your principal, your administrator comes into your classroom and they want to see how you're questioning in your classroom. If you're doing a unit on bees or if you're doing a unit on your nonfiction text features, right here, your students can write on a post-it note their question um, that they have for bees or a statement and then their new learning down here. So this could be post-it note, you could chart this as a whole group, you could do this in a small group if you have a pair pro that comes in, each child could have this, you could write it on a marker marker board eraser, or you could just give them a post-it note and not put it on a large anchor chart. Okay. These can have R, this is another way to do a quick assessment, another way to form questioning, another way to get those points on your team evaluation, another way to promote ag literacy in your classroom. Here are different vocabulary words that I've just pulled from the text. Hive, um, I can't read backwards. Hive, leather, nectar, cells. And when we're writing this vocabulary or when we're charting anything on an anchor chart, this right here, I have sneaky E. So I always draw my students attention over here that hive has four pho three phonemes, I, so I'm pull pulling in my phonics right here, and I'm talking about sneaky E. So when they see me write and chart 
and um, have different things on an anchor chart right here frame there's sneaky e so i talk about fr is the blend you have to be able to always talk about phonemes digraphs in um, pre-k to first grade they're reading they're learning to read so anytime that i have any text hanging in my classroom i try to incorporate the literacy as well here's just a story map for your literacy standards in Tennessee, first graders have to be able to retell a story and they have different nonfiction text standards. So this is where they were able to draw a quick pick and a label. I would use this one with um, the bee man with this story. Because this one's realistic fiction. So it has a story to it to where bees is nonfiction. Two different sets of standards, two different sets of purposes for reading. Story map, and then on the back says um, characters and setting. Another thing you can, a resource that you can have in your classroom, here are ag mags. My first graders cannot read this by themselves. By the time that I have put it on my Elmo, we've highlighted things, we've drawn on here, we've turned and talked to our buddy, we have privately thought to ourselves, we've written some post notes over here, we've done some of these anchor charts. Maybe we did B's can have R, and then we did the Ag Mag, and then we came back in and added more to it. To receive these ag mags, I went to my local Farm Bureau. I teach in Sumner County, and I asked my local Farm Bureau for money for, um, to purchase these. These are $5 for 25 copies um, from the American Farm Bureau Foundation for Agriculture. I'm not sure that they would have this certain B ag mag. They may have updated it, but they have soybeans, they have bees, they have cows, they have garden vegetables all kinds of different ag mags. This is your nonfiction text. When Tennessee went to 50% fiction, 50% nonfiction, I did not have a lot of nonfiction in text or text or literacy pieces in my classroom. So I relied on my local Farm Bureau to supplement. So that's how I got B's ag mag nonfiction and B's class set Nat Geo. Bees are also the Tennessee State Agricultural Insect. First graders in the state of Tennessee now have to know all the state symbols. So that's where you pull your social studies in. I've been evaluated on teaching bees and teaching a lesson like this at least twice with, my, with two different administrators. You could also talk about living and non-living with bees. The next one is a favorite in first grade is all the, this one is if you give a pig a pancake, but if you give a moose a muffin, if you give a mouse a cookie, I mean, if you give a moose a muffin, if you give a mouse a cookie, if you give a pig a pancake, all of these are fiction text. All of these are a circle book. All of these are wonderful to increase the love of literacy, the intrinsic learning, and also the comprehension piece. This is fiction. So how can I pull in nonfiction into my classroom? And how can I pull in ag literacy, science, and math in the lending library of your local Farm Bureau? You have this book from wheat to bread. Once again, if your Farm Bureau doesn't have this in the lending library, or you want both of these, or maybe you want multiple copies to have, ask your local Farm Bureau for funding. There's also another book that's an accurate ad book about pigs. My students can't read this book by themselves. I have this, a class set of this. I also have it on CD. I got it from Scholastic by using all my Scholastic points. So every student has a copy of this. So we might read it together in whole group. We might chart different things. We might be talking about short I that week and, um, Piles. We might tap out pig. It has three phonemes. Pancake is a compound word. 
E makes the A say A. So I pull in as many concepts and as many standards as I can when I'm doing an ag literacy piece. You do have this in your tub. You do have wheat is neat. Okay. So this is your nonfiction text. If you just have a class set or just a copy of if give a pig a pancake, if you give a moose a muffin, pull in wheat. Talk about wheat. It's a plant. It grows from seeds. It's a life cycle. What do living things need? What are byproducts of wheat? That pulls in your economics. If you taught first grade last year in the state of Tennessee or previous, you did your unit starters. There was an economics unit starter piece. I pulled in some of this for the economic piece. Um, farmers grow wheat for sale. They have pigs for sale. And then they have byproducts of each one of these for sale. Mm -hmm. Here is how I would do a lesson on pigs. Please cut that off. Okay. So I would have pigs and I would have animal groups because in first grade they have to know the difference between a mammal, a reptile, a bird, I will talk about pigs' habitats and talk, not all pigs are pink. We learn when, by using the nonfiction text feature, not all pigs are pink. We talk about byproducts of pigs. They would, there's bacon, leather, that talks about economics. Now you talk about life cycle in pigs or moose or the, or the uh, mouse. Okay? Talk about informational writing, pull in the writing piece. Once you've done all this in different anchor charts, have them write what they know, what they learned, give them for um, several different facts. You could chart that as a whole group. You could do that as a small group. Bring in the writing aspect of it, okay? Then do a writing workshop. Think, pair, share, do editing on the informational piece about pigs, about a cookie, about the moose, about a mouse, about a muffin, pancakes. We make pancakes in my classroom. We also make butter in my classroom. So when you make pancakes and butter, that becomes a STEM activity. We discussed that the wheat makes the pancakes, the milk makes the butter, and you have to um, agitate the milk to get the butter. So each kid is engaged while they're sitting there um, shaking the whipping cream. Every single kid is involved in my lesson. Every single kid is engaged. Every single kid is paying attention. Every single kid is asking questions. We might have done a schema, a KWL chart, your new learning. What do you know about butter? What do you know about pancakes? Pancakes could also be STEM. We talk about, you have to, um, when you pour the batter, there are bubbles all over the um, griddle or the pan, whatever you're cooking your pancakes in, I bring in a griddle. What do those bubbles mean? What's happening to those pancakes? You're adding heat to the pancakes and they added heat to the butter. Um, I cook a lot in my classroom and you may not be able to do that in your classroom. When we do this, with, if you give a moose a muffin, I have brought in a toaster oven and made muffins. I usually just bake the muffins at home now. But when we do, if you give a um, pig a party or if you give a cat a cupcake, we bring in, um, I bring in cupcakes and they decorate and then we look at different bakeries and we talk about how much their um, cupcake is worth and what you can sell. So all kinds of different activities that you can do with each one of these books that incorporate all of your standards in your classroom plus ag literacy. Um, bring in nonfiction text and talk about pigs, bring in nonfiction text and talk about the moose a mouse, okay? When you're making pancakes and butter, do your opinion writing. I love pancakes because I do not love pancakes. In my classroom in first grade, they have to give me three reasons and defend those reasons for your opinion writing. You're supposed to be able to, in first grade, when you leave in the state of Tennessee, you're supposed to be able to do opinion writing, informational writing, and a personal narrative. We do all three of those um, year round in my classroom. Opinion, do you like pigs? Do you like pancakes? Yes or no, defend it. Informational writing, it's a recipe. When you cook, it's chemistry, it's agriculture. It's also a recipe. 
okay? A how-to piece, step-by-step, step, what you did first, what you did next. Um, you talk about the syrup. So several different things you can pull just from this one book. I usually do this book the first week of school or the third week, first, second, third, when we're still assessing students, when we're still um, pulling them, assessing them on math, color words, various little quick assessments, and my kids are going in and out. So I still need to teach my standards and quickly assess my kids in there to figure out what do they know? Can they write a sentence? Can they make a question mark? Do they know the difference between a statement and um, a questioning word if we do an anchor chart? And um, Miss Beverly showed you all George Washington Carver. Here's another book. This came from my public library. I have a class set of a different George Washington Carver for my classroom. I asked my local Farm Bureau for funding to receive those books. So here's George Washington Carver. So this is how I would plan, a rough draft of how I would plan. You could talk about George Washington Carver, a timeline that was in your unit starter last year for first grade for the state of Tennessee that had to identify, create, and display their own timeline. Talk about peanuts. Miss Beverly talked about peanuts. A company is the Tennessee Peanut Company. They're online, they're on Instagram. You can find them, they would be a great resource. They might not be able to come into your classroom as a guest speaker and you always want to be aware of food allergies, but they would be a great resource to um, reach out to. Talk about George Washington Carver, do informational writing. Vocabulary would be roots, stem, pod, botany. This is an, this is a um, indicator on your team evaluation. Um, he was a botanist. He did create different ways to use peanuts and he um, really encouraged crop rotation because the cotton plant that all the farmers were using were taking so many nutrients, nitrogen out of the field, he had to create something to help them. Right? Crop rotation and why? That's their new learning, that's their schema. They may not know lots of things about George Washington Car Carver. They may only know that peanut butter comes from peanuts. But he created over 300 different things that has peanuts in them. One of them is paint and crayons. That's what they remember. Now you can do a Venn diagram. You can compare and contrast peanuts and cotton, peanuts and soybeans. You could do a Venn diagram, George Washington Carver, and then you, George Washington Carver, and then your student. Okay. George Washington Carver, this text right here is nonfiction. So you've got to be able to have 50% fiction and 50% nonfiction in your classroom. So here are your nonfiction text features that you will have in this story, or if you don't have this book, you can have nonfiction text features in, a, in any nonfiction book. Talk about the photographs in this book, right? That's a, um, there are photographs and illustrations in the story. Nonfiction texts have photographs and not illustrations. You can discuss in labels and you can discuss close-ups and then the glossary and the index. My George Washington Carver books are by Nat Geo Kids and it has a close-up and labels and the glossary and the index in it. <laughs> You're pulling your literacy standards because in Tennessee, um, kindergarten, first and second, nonfiction and, liter and literacy are separate. They're all underneath the reading umbrella. You can talk about your story elements, beginning, middle, and end, characters, the problem and solution, top, bottom, left, and right. In first grade, they have to be able to read and understand and comprehend. You start at the top of a page and we read left to right. Retelling, you could use any story map that you have in your um, teacher box. You can find all kinds of things about George Washington Carver and retelling on Pinterest. Tennessee Ag in the Classroom has a Pinterest page and also Teacher Pay Teacher. All kinds of different things that you can use to quickly assess, be evaluated on, reach your standards, and stay within your curriculum.
This is a nonfiction book. Um, I, ladybugs are the state insect of Tennessee. Ladybugs and lightning bugs are the state insect of Tennessee. So I asked my local Farm Bureau for funding to purchase a class set. When I say class set, I'm always thinking of 25 kids. I've had 25 first graders for a while now. Um, so when I'm thinking about ladybugs and how to plan, talk about vocabulary. Aphid, insect, larva, life cycle, pupa, pattern, molt. Vocabulary reaches that team evaluation. Compare and contrast ladybugs and bees. Bees, remember, are the agricultural insect. Ladybugs are just the state insect, along with lightning bugs. We talk about pollinators. Ms. Beverly talked about that earlier. If you're not familiar with bees, insects, or pollinators, call your local UT Extension agent. Last year, the um, local UT Extension agent was in my classroom um, a lot. Not sure if they'll be able to do that this year. But we've already discussed, myself and my local UT Extension agent, can we Skype? Can we do short videos? Can you do a, a boomerang? Can you send something to me? Can you text me? How can you still help me teach this standard life cycles, um, animal groups, because ladybugs are an insect, something first graders have to know? How can my UT Extension agency help me? So find out who your local UT Extension agency is. Whatever they have and can offer you, it's free and it looks great because you're collaborating with community members. Carolina Biological Company, carolina.com. There are two different ways you can have live ladybugs in your classroom. This is hands-on, this would be STEM, this would hit your science standards. This is life cycle. You can have just the ladybugs already hatched or you can have them in the larva stage. I asked my local Farm Bureau once again if I could have money to um, hatch ladybugs in my classroom. You could also pair this, this book, since this is a nonfiction text, you can pair this with The Grouchy Ladybug by Eric Carl. Right? Ask your local Farm Bureau for The Grouchy Ladybug or funding for it, or find it in your local library or find it in your school library. You could also go online and YouTube it. Right? Tennessee State Insect, talk about the life cycle, talk about living and non-living. It's nonfiction. All kinds of graphic organizers, because nonfiction text teach something different. You're reading for information when you read a nonfiction text. Okay? Caption, index, title page, glossary, photograph, all of those things are in this story. So when we're opening this up, they might be on the carpet, they might be in a small group, we might do it both. Here's the table of contents. Nonfiction texts have these, fiction don't. Real photographs, close-ups, and labels. This is a close-up, and then obviously these are the labels, where the arrows are. So that is um, another standard. I know that kindergarten, first, and second have to know. And at the very end is the glossary and the index. Another way you can reach your standards, include agriculture in it and your science standards. This is one of my favorite stories, where the wild things are. Um, I've just picked these books up at Goodwill. I've had some for a while. I have a class set of this. I also have it on CD. Um, Fiction, great, so you can pull in all kinds of different literacy standards, beginning, middle, end. Max is a character, wild things are a character. Okay. Then how do you pull, how do you extend this? How can you make this nonfiction? How can you pull in ad literacy with this? For the upper grades, they could talk about dominant and recessive traits. You could have a lab to determine which genes the monsters have and inherit from their parents. But in first grade down here, this is what I do. I talk about structural and behavioral adaptations in their habitat. I use that vocabulary, the DOK, the depth of knowledge that you're being evaluated on. Um, my students may not remember these structural behavior adaptation words, 
but I'm speaking it to them. I'm changing their schema. They're using it in their conversations, their conversations when I'm being evaluated. Or if I'm not being evaluated, I still talk about this. We can open this book and study the different adaptations, and then have their kit. My students make their own wild thing and they make their own habitat. So I would stop on this page right here to talk about structural and behavior adaptations. And I would, since they all have one, they all have this on their lap, they may be at their desk, they could be in their personal spot. And I would say, look, this wild thing has a beak. Nobody else has a beak. Why does he have a beak? What is in his habitat that he needs that beak for? This one has toes. Nobody else has toes. So what does he need these toes for to survive and help him in his habitat? This one has web feet. So I would probably say a sentence like this. This wild thing has web feet. So I'm inferring that there is some water or a body of water nearby because I know ducks have web feet and ducks live in water. Instead of just using this story to do the fiction side, the retelling, the beginning, the middle, the end, the problem, the solution, Max is the wild thing, all kinds of awesome teacher pay teacher things that we have on our Pinterest page and on teacher pay teacher. What about science? What about the nonfiction aspect of this? How can I make this book work a little bit more for me in my classroom? Okay. I can tell that they're jumping really high on this one. I can also see right here, this one is the only one that has a tail. So talk about animals, habitats, and discuss why animals look different. Scales, fur. So this wild things would be for a higher group. Once again, remember to hit those high vocabulary words. Okay. These two activities are found on our Pinterest page. So if you go to the ten Pinterest, Tennessee Foundation for Ag in the Classroom, look underneath genetics, because that is a topic that sixth through 12th grade could use this book for. I've used this book in my first grade classroom when high school kids have come to visit me. The high school kids loved it and the first graders loved it. Then find monster genetics and wild things. Okay. They're both underneath our pin Pinterest page. Look underneath genetics. Right. This is in your tub, the tales of a dairy godmother. Right. This would be realistic fiction. Parts are real, parts are fake. Right. Because people don't fly, so that's how we, we'd be sitting in a carpet. We would take a picture walk before we would read this story. And I would say, okay, with your eyes, because I don't want them talking, this would be private think time. I want you to um, take a picture walk and I may give them a question and give them a purpose for reading. When we get finished taking your picture walk, I want you to be able to tell me something that is fake, okay? So they may be able to tell me that we don't have a fairy godmother, okay? Then I may say, tell me something that is real if we do that activity again. So we've taken two picture walks. They may tell me that um, we get milk from cows. Maybe we're changing our schema then. Okay. So with all of this, you can do fiction and nonfiction. You do have a educator guide that comes with this. Lots of activities with dairy and milk and ice cream on our Pinterest page. There is a story map that I keep referring to. You would do this for the fiction side of this story. It's realistic fiction, so it does tells a, tell a story in order. Beginning, middle, end. So I have them, my first graders, we'd ha I'd step this through them um, in August. I would probably do number one, number three, and number five in September. By October, probably by the end of S September, most of my kids, I will give them this and say, I need you to retell it to me. They've got to be able to do it on their own individually. Some kids will always need scaffolding and that's fine. You're there to help them, right? Or you can always have a think pair share where they do number one, number two, and number three by themselves. Then they go pair up with somebody, 
check it, have a little checklist over here, make sure you have your um, items and your topics, and then come back and do this as a whole class, or they come back and they do that individually. On the back is setting up at the top and characters. Okay. So that's how I would pull in my fiction part of this book. Okay. Here are other books that you probably have in your classroom. Click Clack Moon. I have a class set of Click Clack Moon, also have it on CD. I have lots of books because I told you I've been teaching for 19 years. I try to have a class set of most any book that I have that I use often because I want my kids to be able to see the pictures, illustrations. I want the Barnes and Noble effect. I do like to sit and read to my kids and have read alouds, but I love to read aloud and then give each one of my kids a classroom set. I've written several grants and um, relied on my local Farm Bureau and bought a lot of books at Goodwill. So Click Clack Moo is one, that would be fiction. Clarabelle, Making Milk and so much more and Milk Makers by Gail Gibbons. Okay, find all of these on Amazon. Some of these are in your lending library. You probably have some of these in your classroom library and they're probably in your school library or the public library. Okay, and um, this will be linked on our um, Instagram page later on. And um, it will also, it's also in our um, alphabet soup book. Okay, to make rock and roll ice cream. This would be for upper grades. When I make ice cream in a bag, um, it gets really messy. So what I have tweaked this just a little bit for my first graders because in the um, upper grade, they talk about endothermic and exothermic ice cream. We don't talk about that in primary grades. In the primary lesson, we would say milk comes from dairy cows. There's three types of matter. That's where you pull your science in. Milk is a liquid. Some mixture can be easily separated, kind of like a salad. You're eating a vegetable salad. You can pick out the tomatoes. I always pick out the onions. You can pick out the croutons. You can separate this easily. Ice cream and milkshakes are not, are a mixture that are hard to separate, like strawberry milkshake. When I do this lesson, I read Click Clack Moon. I just received this book this year, so I'll pull this in. But then to make ice cream, I pull in the um, ice cream maker that I had as a child where you had to sit there and crank it. And then I'll also bring in an electric one. And then we talk about just too how things have changed over time. So that's another um, Venn diagram you could pull in. That's another T chart that you could talk about when we make ice cream. To make ice cream, we start it, then kids go to lunch, and then my kids go immediately to related arts after lunch. So we are not in there the entire time that the ice cream is churning and making loud noises. Okay. So here's this book. You do have the educator guide. Talk about dairy cows. You compare and contrast dairy cows to beef cattle. Compare and contrast milk to ice cream. Then to pull in some literacy standards, you could use a retelling chart or story map. And like Miss Beverly talked about, in the fall we talk about um, pumpkins. Here's Gail Gibbons, the pumpkin book. This is in your um, your first grade. This was in your um, either the life cycle or economic unit starter last year. So I've used that's where this one came from. From seed to pumpkin was also in your unit starter. We're not sure if we're doing unit starters this year. It may be tweaked, but I'm still going to keep both of these. I think I have five of these and five of these. So if you would like these books, go find your first grade teacher in your school. Ask him or her, can you borrow these? Okay. And then this one, Seeds for Hot Pumpkin Pie. All of these are nonfiction texts. Okay. Here's another anchor chart that you can do that I'm sure you've done 
several of these in your classroom. You can do these before, during, or after any unit. So I've chose the word pumpkin. You could chart things that they know. This would be your questioning would come in. Remember, you're evaluated on your team model lesson evaluation on questioning. They could ask the question, are all pumpkins green? Are all pumpkins orange? Do pumpkins grow on a vine? Okay. You, then when you get finished, they could chart their schema. Tell me a statement of what you learned. Okay. Oh, on the back, pumpkins can have R. You could chart it. You could have your kids do a post-it note or um, you could divide your kids up and they could chart it. I'm sure you've done this as well. Okay. Your, um, this story would be realistic. This one is um, nonfiction, but also tells a story. So I would use a story map with this one. Bring in some of the literacy pieces, beginning, middle, end, character, setting, problem, solution. Okay. From seed to pumpkin, it taught, it's fiction and nonfiction. But this one tells more of an actual story with characters. So that's where we use this story map to increase their comprehension. Then these two don't really tell a story. They tell the story of the pumpkin, the life cycle of the pumpkin. So that's where I would use a nonfiction text graphic organizer. Now you have vocabulary words in here. Here are the facts. Here are the main idea. That's a standard in first grade. My opinion about this book, they liked it. They don't like pumpkins. They love pumpkins. I do have a local Farm Bureau lady that I rely on. We take a field trip to her pumpkin patch. Not sure if we'll do it this year, but I would still love to be able to call on her and maybe we can Skype. Maybe she can tell us different facts. Maybe I can, um, um, I chat with her. She could hold up different pumpkins. They grow pumpkins. She could talk about how much they sell their pumpkins for, if they make a business. If it doesn't rain, they don't have pumpkins, the byproducts of pumpkins. Okay. To pull in your stations and your individual um, station time, um, I've made a retelling of the pumpkin life cycle. These are um, all on felt because I teach first grade. So they do go to stations. I have two kids in each station. So this would be the seed. And that's just a felt seed on a dowel stick. So there would be the seed. Then there would be the sprout. This is green. This is the soil right here. This is the mound. As it's on, pumpkins grow on vines, they don't grow on trees. Then you have the flower, so talk about pollination, bees. And you have the little green pumpkin. And then I chose to have an orange pumpkin, but um, from here to here, the pumpkin can change depending on the variety. It could be a baby boo, which is yellow. It could be a, I mean, which is white. It could be a blanco, which is white. Um, so you can change your retelling of your pumpkins however you want to. Now with first graders, when they see this, this is a, usually a weapon, they're drumsticks, they're toys. So we have a conversation, lots of conversations before you go to your station. And when I pull this out, what you do and what you don't do, because this, they'll fan it. This could be a fairy wand for some of them. It's the tooth fairy. So I get it. That's what these immediately are, and that's okay, but we have a conversation of this is a, this is a purpose. The purpose of this is to retell the story, okay? This is the life cycle of pumpkin on different cards that I've had from an old reading series that I kept, and they're self-checking on the back. So I don't have to hear, I'm done, I'm done, what do I need to do? We have a conversation about that too before you go to your station. But if you're retelling the story of the pumpkin, you can lay it out. And then you can flip it over and it's number one on the back, it's self-checking. And then to help my students with these, the retelling of the felt pumpkins, I made cards. So the first is the seed, it's self-checking as well. Number two is the sprout. Because I do have some kids that um, are on the spectrum that need more help, that need more scaffolding. Um, so they need the picture that matches well, I call these pumpkin puppets. So when they're retelling it in their station, that it matches. So they, can, so they know they're a visual learner and that's totally fine. I also made these, um, I made those, actually technically my mom made those 
and we made them for an apple as well. And those are in my station all year long, but there's always a conversation about um, the purpose of these. All right, the next one, you do not have this in your tub. Um, if a friend or a coworker has this book, it was in their tub from previous years. You can buy this on Amazon. This is also in your lending library. You can also um, find it maybe your local library, or your local library, your um, school library, or ask your Farm Bureau for funding. This is a nonfiction text. It tells the story um, of an individual food item and how it got into your lunchbox. How did the bread in your sandwich get to your lunchbox? And it's the cycle of how it got to your lunchbox. My kids cannot read this by themselves independently, kind of like the B Ag Mag that I showed you earlier. But as many activities as I do this year round, they are able to get that um, some concepts. So I will have some students that will be able to sit down and read part of this. Here is um, how did the cheese get into your lunchbox. So if you've done an activity, you'll click like moo, very uh, dairy mother. Um, any activities to do with milk and ice cream, they already have schema and prior knowledge of how this process works, right? So I have this book and I took it to my classrooms like I like this book. It reaches some of my standards. This was, he has wrote another one that is in your first grade unit starter, it's um, how did that get in my, how did that cotton get in my shirt or how do I make my clothes? He wrote another one about clothing and where your clothes come from. This one is about your lunchbox. So I used that clothing one as a unit starter piece last year. And then I also referred to this one at the same time. The first graders can't read this, but by the time we do so many different literacy activities, anchor charts, KWL, post-it notes, they can read some of this. So I thought, for a station, because we go to stations in first grade, this is a metal lunchbox. I found it at Goodwill, and I found, I found two at Goodwill. One of them broke. I just ordered a second one yesterday, $14.99 on Amazon. Type in metal vintage lunchbox. And I copied, color copied the title. So when my kids go to their station, they know this activity goes with this book. Once again, that's a conversation that we've had and inside this metal lunchbox, um, I have plastic placemats that I just drew on. Okay. So they are able to know different food groups, the fruit, the vegetable, the protein, the grain, the dairy. We've had conversations about which fruit which food is a fruit, which fruit is, which food is a grain. And then in here are all kinds of food cards. Once again, it's a conversation. And when you come over here, these aren't fans. It's not a Frisbee. You don't need to bend them. So my kids know, we've had several conversations. They love this station. This is ham. So this would be a nonfiction text feature. It's a photograph, nonfiction. On the back, um, I teach some kids what that means, but that's not something that we talk about in first grade. So then they would take the ham and we would do this as a whole group two or three times before I put this in the station. We talk about where, what's the origin of ham. Um, it comes from pig, so that would be protein, meat. When I do this activity, I have my school nurse come in and talk about eating the rainbow, how you're supposed to eat different colors, your plate is supposed to be colorful, also have the cafeteria manager come in, Miss Debbie, and she talks about what she makes for breakfast and how she has to feed them a rainbow. Miss Debbie, the cafeteria manager, also talks about something like pizza. The pizza could be all of these items right here, especially if you put pineapple or some type of fruit on your um, pizza. Um, I do teach that the tomato is the fruit because the tomato is the state fruit of Tennessee. First graders are supposed to know that. So a piece of pizza would have maybe all of this on there, depending on what type of pizza you got. Okay. So that's how I use this activity in my classroom. 
if you've ever been to a Montessori school, observed or um, taught in Montessori school, Montessori teaches them how to set their table every day. They have their um, own fork and place setting, knife, spoon, cup. And when you set your table, that teaches them top, bottom, left, and right. Because the cup always goes on the top and the fork and spoon and knife go in a certain place. The cup is supposed to be up here even with the plate. So this helps just visualize where it's supposed to go on the table and it helps teach them the different food groups to eat a rainbow, eat different colors on your plate. And you can also do all kinds of anchor charts with this. Story maps, different activities that you can pull in, but I wanted to be able to use this. Yes, I mean read alouds in small groups in literacy, but then how can I make this a longer lasting piece and put it in my station? Here is another book right this very minute that you could also use with that. Seeds. Um, Chris Fleming, who you heard from this morning, will talk to you about your garden grant at the end. He did speak of it a little bit this morning and first time is $500 for school. Anytime after that is $250. Right, when you're talking about growing the garden, um, Miss Beverly talked to you today about her garden. There are all kinds of different books that talk about seeds, the life cycle, soil, gardens, growing things, first piece to the table. Diary of a Worm. So this is fiction. This is nonfiction. Growing Vegetable Soup by Lois Elhart. I Am a Seed. So these are just examples. I know you all have all kinds of different books about seeds and plants. There's a whole unit started on it from last year. The Tiny Seed by Eric Carle. Tomatoes Grow on a Vine. I've already mentioned tomatoes are the state fruit of Tennessee. This is a nonfiction text book. Here are two magazines. Dig It, they're like weekly readers that I kept. And oops, Soil to Spoon. Oh, I had it right. Soil to Spoon. Here's just one of, and I've shown you this several times today, the um, informational Graphical organizer. I try to use the same one in my classroom. I vary it some. I have about three that I rotate. That way my students um, are able to read the nonfiction text or maybe we've read it together and then they complete this by themselves. Okay. okay so here's how I, just ideas and how I would teach. Here would be seeds on a big anger chart and they would write all kinds of questions on a post-it note. You could chart different things, what they already know, what they hope to know, KWL. Here's plants, here's their schema, what they already know about plants. Plants are living things, plants need water. Plants are in the ground. Here's your new learning. This is what they know after you've completed your unit. Garden, charts and things about a garden. You're doing your KWL chart. Talk about soil, worms, garden and seeds. On our Pinterest page, we have a whole, we have boards that are devoted to each one of these. We have all kinds of videos about worms on our Pinterest page that you can pull up. A T chart, talk about leaves, photosynthesis. There's a um, DOK, depth of knowledge vocabulary word, parallel veins that are in the um, leaves. Questioning, that's on your team evaluation. When, where, why, how, all kinds of different ways to ask a question. Can I eat the plant? What does a plant give me? Do I need a plant to survive? A okay, Venn diagram on seeds versus plants or fruit versus a vegetable. Talk about the nonfiction text. Okay. This one, talk about the photographs. Table contents, that's a nonfiction text feature that they need to be able to identify and um, know what it is. 
They also need to be able to identify the index and what is the purpose of the index. I asked my local Farm Bureau for a class set of these. Um, it's been about, um, I would say, five years ago. And I wrote a description, uh, uh, gave them the title, went on Amazon, found how much they were, and then told them why I needed, why I wanted to use this. And I linked different standards to this text. Okay. The very tiny C would be your literacy piece. You could do different story elements with it, character, problem, setting, solution. Okay. Great. Great, great book that we probably all have in our classroom. Right? With growing vegetable soup, I bring in a crock pot and we make vegetable soup. One year we had the SAT 10. That was our um, quick assessment that we were using in our district. And the SAT 10 had a question about which item helps you in your kitchen. And it was a chair, a dump truck, or an apron. All of my kids chose the chair because at home they sit down in a chair to eat. Sat 10, the assessment wanted the apron because that helps you cook. Not a lot of people wear an apron anymore. So I went, um, when we make anything that we cook in, I have old aprons from Cracker Barrel that they put on. Then we talk about a chef and what a chef uses. Then when we, when we have vegetable soup, I cheat. I do bring in some raw vegetables, but I do bring lots of canned vegetables. I already have the vegetables in the crock pot already heated but then that way it just speeds up the time but we do talk about carrots and celery and onions and we top up some of that stuff and we do put it in our crock pot and we do eat vegetable soup okay. I'll show you one activity that we have discussed today that's hands-on that I do in my classroom when we're talking about soil and um, we call when I read this story diary of a worm I will have done all kinds of different charts with it, pulled different things out of here, talked about inferring, questioning the main idea, um, pictures, taking a picture walk. I would have typed in worms um, on YouTube, gone and watched the nonfiction text video that is on our Pinterest page underneath the worm board. Then for the hands-on activity, I would do the dirt cups or I call them soil cups. Okay, so you take, uh, these are graham crackers or vanilla wafers, sorry, vanilla wafers, whatever you have. You want to pour that in there? Okay. And then have a pudding cup. My kids have done this. So put the vanilla wafers on the bottom. Do a chocolate pudding cup. Okay. I have been evaluated on this activity, on this lesson. I'll link it to my standards. Okay. So you have the vanilla wafers on the bottom, the pudding cup on top, and then you have crushed Oreos on the very top. I have this prepared already for what best fits my classroom, depending on if I have a parapro in there with me, depending on if I have a parent volunteer, if I have somebody in there with me, or if I'm flying solo with all 25 kids. Okay, so vanilla wafers, pudding, and then crushed Oreos. If you want to, you can dye coconut put on the top grass, um, gummy worms. That this would be your um, bedrock, this would be your subsoil, this would be your topsoil. And here is a chart that you could make. It's also online on our Pinterest page. Craft Foods has done it. There's several pictures on it. It's also on Teacher Pay Teacher. Um, several layers of the soil, but in first grade, we only do three. So we have a science journal, we have a STEM journal, and may have them um, copy this, may have them create their own. Yeah, they get to make their own soil cup. We might do a how-to piece. That would be a recipe, step one, step two. But this ties into the gardens and the soil, photosynthesis, and worms. Okay. You can also bring in um, your seed packets. Like Ms. Beverly said, go to your local co-op. This is nonfiction text right here. There's your nonfiction picture. And then on the back is some information that we don't go too in depth in in first grade, but we do talk about. Okay. All right. We are finished with this section of how do you link um, your ag literacy parts, your ag literacy 
with different standards and how to talk about fiction and nonfiction. Um, your last break is now, then we're gonna come back and talk about free resources, grants, who you can contact, if you need help in your classroom, who can you Skype, who can you FaceTime, who can you um, call and say, hey, I need some money, some funding. This activity is great. I just don't know um, how I can get there. And the lending library. So we will take a, let's take a 10 minute break. We'll come back, do all the free resources. And then after that, um, Mr. Chris Fleming will conclude it, talk about more um, free resources in your grants, okay? We want to show you different websites that we will email you later. Here's the National Ag in the Classroom website. And it, this is the matrix. So this has where you can put in a topic right here. Let's put in apples. And here are all kinds of different um, Apple lesson plans that you can go through. You can also go back up here and have a resource. You could do a specific topic or um, certain grade level and Common Core connections, ag literacy, content area. So maybe you're just wanting apples, kindergarten, and you might want to do a content area of science and it will um, it will show you all the different ones that you have chosen as a default. And you can also um, do apples and corn. And I'll show you both of those at the same time. If you click on one of these lessons, these are not Tennessee lessons. So they do not have your Tennessee standards with them. This is three through five estimated 60 minutes, but Tennessee educators are awesome. So they, you can be able to take this lesson plan adapt it to your classroom, to your kids, and to your lesson um, standards that you need. Each one of these is a different link, and it may be a PDF, it could be a different a website, it could be a video. This one right here is an article, so this would be your nonfiction text that you can either show on your smart board or you can make copies of, okay? And at any time when you're looking at these activities, you find something, make sure that you um, set up a binder. You can log in and, and set up your own self binder and then you can save that to your binder. So it's easier for you to go back and find it again uh, later. Right here is where you can make your binder, right here and right here. Log into your binder. So that way you always have them. It's, if it's your favorite, if it's one that you've saved um, and tweaked, that way at least you always have the original. Here's My American Farm. This is videos that your students can play. This one has K-8 on it. So I um, show my students on my Elmo, on my projector, which ones they can play and which ones they cannot play that's just too hard for them. I use this a lot in my after school program. It makes a great resource for, uh, especially on the rainy days when we can't get outside. Um, the kids really love this My American Farm. Let's go to second grade. Here are different second grade activities. Um, I've also done this on the iPad and in our computer lab. So this one tells you um, the ag commodities, food production, and food groups. So I may pull this one in for food groups and talk about what's in my lunchbox or right this very minute, the two books that I showed you earlier. You could talk about food production if you're doing George Washington Carver, talk about being a botanist and how you grow food. You see, I also did soybeans and have a guest speaker come in. It could be the school nutritionist or the school um, nurse. This one is the same, um, ag commodities, food groups, heavy machinery talk about um, engineering, machinery, uh, simple machines, complex machines. Anything you wanna add? Go down to the next one. Okay. 
the, the shopping grab. Um, a lot of my children, they, uh, and they enjoy this game because you have to uh, go through the store and pull things in to make whatever it t you know, suggests and tells you to make. So the kids have a great time at that. And even though they play the game and they, and it's, they win it, it's all over with, they go, we want to do it again. And they do it again and again. So anyways, I just feel like um, My American Farm is a way just to keep constantly, you know, instilling um, agriculture in their little brains. <laughs> If you are doing this in your school and you have a desktop, um, you're going to have to go in here somehow. Uh, I have it where it turns off printing because they right. do get a certificate if they've completed the certain levels. Um, don't exactly remember where that is. You do not have to have an account for this, but right here for educators, you might go in and turn off printing um, or you might not want to. You might want them to have their um, certificate. That would be up to you. Here is American Farm Bureau Federation Foundation for Agriculture. Okay, this is where a lot of the books and ag mags come from. This website is where I go to if I can't find a book on Amazon or I price check. I check here first and then I go to Amazon. Okay. And let's go back up here and type in. Recommended adaptations. Okay, here's resources. Here's free resources and web and um, lesson plans. Here are publications. That's more for you. Here's where you can search different um, by different grades and different topics. Where are the books? I'm trying to find. Um, I thought it was there. Because she had him pulled up Jeff Forrest. <laughs> She's awesome. Recommended publications. You have to scroll all the way down. Right there. There they are at the very bottom. There's some of the ones that we've talked about. Um, there's the educator guide. So this is where you can go in and you can find, um, here's full of beans. There is a quick video about this book on our Instagram page. And it shows you inside the book. It shows you how to use this in your classroom. Talks about some guest speakers that can come. And it talks about the educator guide. And there's um, Chuck's ice cream educator guide. And then the tales of the dairy godmother over here. So this is where you could come in. You can type in the author, the um, keyword that you're wanting. And you can also relate it to your reading level. Reading level right here is kindergarten first. It's not reading level in first grade like Fontanus Pinnell. That's the reading levels in class level. Okay. Is there anything you want to tell me about this? Okay. And then the last one we want to show you, well, there's two more. Here's Purple Plow. This is for upper elementary, but this is where you can get all kinds of different ideas for STEM. They do have a challenge on here that is for schools to learn and compete and win. Um, this one, they change it, but this one is $100 in Visa gift card and a 3D printer. So this is worth something to look into if you have a STEM lab, if you have an outdoor garden, you want to incorporate more hands-on. There's Purple Plow. Maybe you want to team up with the third, fourth, or fifth grade teacher in your classroom. This is all about STEM and science. And there are different ex science experiments that they can do at home. My students don't do a lot with this, but I know that my fifth grade teachers do several things on this website. Okay, so there's Purple Plow. Then My American Farm. 
the national ag in the classroom. This has the matrix. And then here is how to locate your local Farm Bureau. I rely on my local Farm Bureau a lot. I'm from Sumner County. And um, this is just, if I click on it, Christy, does it give them the phone number? So here's Sumner, where I'm from. And there's, yep, yeah, there's president, vice president, my secretary. Those would be who I would contact. Um, and click right here. That's who I'd be contact in Sumner County to find out about the lending library. Um, if I wanted some funding, if I needed someone to come in and talk um, to me, that's where I would find them. Okay. Here's one thing that's in your tab that's free. It's a teacher resource guide before Chris comes on. Um, on page nine is the Tennessee Soybean Council. So all of these items they have in their office, they're free if you call them. They will send you a pack like of crayons. It's a pack of four crayons, red, yellow, blue, green. But that's an immediate act, uh, activity and response and resource that my, it's free. My kids connect crayons to soybeans. So this one right here, find this. That's a free resource of the beef checkoff, soybeans, corn, and I think Georgia peanuts in the back. If you're talking about George Washington Carver, Flip all the way to the back and contact Georgia Peanut Association for posters. Uh, maybe they'll talk to you over the phone and maybe they'll talk to your kids. Okay. All right. Y'all have any questions? Tell us what you're going to do in your classroom, what you hope to do in your classroom.